we're starting the broadcast now, and I'm starting the recording. And welcome to uh, the webinar, the celebration of a million hits. I'm so excited about that. I think it's so neat. Oh, yeah, right. Winifred's here, <laughs> and uh, she's clapping for me uh, because you guys are muted, of course. There's too many folks right now to, to try and unmute you. But if any of you want to ask a question, I mean, type it in the, in the chat box, or in, not the chat, but in the question box. But if you want to ask a, a question, you've in your little command post there, you've got a, a place where you can click on your hand and raise your hand. And we'll see that hand, and we could then, uh, <clears throat> you know, unmute you and say hello and all of that sort of stuff there. Um, I hope we don't get overloaded. We we can hold a hundred, and there are only forty four here right now. But I see uh, a hand. Sandy has a hand up. Hey, Sandy. All right. Well, let's see. Let's hey, see. Sandy, what you got going? No. You don't want to say anything? I've got you unmuted. H O N E. <laughs> I think it was all an accident or something. Yeah. Uh, She's not hearing me right now, so I'll unmute her again. It was probably an accident. <laughs> well, I do that all the time. Uh, let's see now. What do I need to do? Oh, no. Sandy said no microphone. But I could hear you, Sandy. You were something was going on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, now, you can also type in anything you want to type in, like if you want me to see something or you want me to do something. Um, uh, or demo something. Right. Winifred's going to be here, and she'll be looking at the... Um, oh, Helen is here. Stuff. Oh, good. good. Hey, Helen. I want to... Helen, I'm going to make you an organizer, whether you like it or not. I just thought that would be fun. Um, let me make you that, and then you'll be able to hear. Did she come in? Helen, are you here? Yes, I am, but I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you very well. I just thought it would be fun to have you pop in and, and you know, say anything. You can ask questions and interact with us and all of that, too. It would just be fun. We're having a lot of fun. Tim was here this morning. And, I wish I had been. Uh, well, was, we're going to do it again. It it was funny too, uh, uh, Helen. Uh, Tim was kibitzing. You know, he was giving me a hard time about everything. My my <laughs> mil my million that I had uh, gotten to, I wasn't quite there when the webinar started. I was five off, and he kept saying, "Well, why are we meeting then?" <laughs> it was funny. How was the uh, photography thing? It was excellent. I am so disappointed that you weren't there. I know. I, I don't know if you heard the weirdness that happened. I tried to install Windows 10, and it took six days of Microsoft support. And oh I still never got it done. So uh, anyway, I was trying to get ready for class, and I just I, I couldn't take the time off. No, of course not. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about... Um, 2016. All right, so the first thing I want to do is tell you guys that the... But, uh, Skip, real quick, could we address something from Doug, which I'm sure you will like this question anyway. Okay. He wants to know if it's okay to import... Doug, I can't see... Winifred, what's going on? I don't know. Oh, that's not you? I don't know. What's gone now? It's okay, gone. so uh, what Question, you Is it okay to import a 2015 workspace or better to just set up a new 2016 workspace manually? Okay. And okay to import 2015 brush sets, etc. Any advice on setting up Painter 2016? Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, you can do that. Now, what uh, Doug is talking about 
is that if I have, you know, let's pretend that I've got 2015 open or X3 or Painter 12, I don't care, an earlier version of Painter. I would go up to brushes and I would, I'm sorry, <laughs> I would go to window and to workspace and I would export workspace and I would export whatever workspace I normally use. Now, if you don't, if you hadn't made a workspace, you would want to export the default workspace. Um, that is if you have custom stuff that you want. So you would export the workspace and put it somewhere, um, you know, on your desktop in a document file or, or somewhere on your computer. After you export it, then you come into 2016. And when you come to 2016, you go back to Windows, Workspace, and you click on Import Workspace. Now, you import the workspace, uh, you know, you navigate to it, uh, select it, and say Import. Near the end of the import, right about the time it's uh, switching workspaces, it will say some of the stuff um, is not going to come over. It's not compatible or whatever. And there may be some things. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it says, but basically it's trying to tell you that some things like your um, arranged palettes, uh, uh, some of the stuff like that, uh, if you had, uh, you know how when you go to new and you might have some stuff added here, well, that, yeah, that stuff isn't going to come over, okay? But the rest of the stuff, brushes, custom palettes, um, all of that kind of thing will come. Okay, so it comes over to 2016, but you're not quite finished. When it comes into 2016, the codes for 2015 is still sort of in it. And it needs to be updated to 2016 code. So what you will want to do next is close a uh, painter. And let's see, can we do, well, I can do this part of the way. All right, I'll, I'm going to close painter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key and then start painter like I normally would. And what's going to open up is this Corel Painter 2016 uh, reset uh, window. Now, this is new. What we've got here is keep some customizations. And if you click all brushes, all of the libraries, papers, patterns, scripts, and so forth, and custom palettes, it's going to keep all of those. Now, if you click down here and say restore all to factory settings, then it's going to wipe everything out and set it to factory settings. And you can either reset all workspaces or reset the current workspace. In my case, I don't want to do any of those. So I'm going to cancel. Um, so once you do that, and, and do it right after you import your painter, because you don't want to start adding any more stuff to the uh, workspace and then have to get rid of it with a reset. But once you do that, once you reset it once, then what it does is it takes all the code from that was in there that might be a little off from 2015 uh, and updates it to the 2016 code. And so that's the, uh, you know, that makes it all that much better. Now, brushes and stuff, you can import any brushes from earlier versions. If you're going to import a workspace and your brushes are in the workspace, they're going to come and there's no, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Just do the reset like you've been doing. But if you bring in another brush, let's say you're going to import a workspace, I mean a, a library or import a brush category. You know, to do that, you would go up to brushes, import, and you would, let me close this first so I've got the showing you know, brushes import and you'd select brush category brush library whatever and um, that's going to come into painter and it will be if it's a category it'll be installed in whatever your currently selected library is now here's the suggestion that I have now there's nothing anywhere that says you have to do this but I really 
find that it works best for me. I will take that library, that brush, that category, whatever I just imported, and I'll go back up to brushes and I will export it. So I'll export a brush, category, or library. Now once it's exported, then I'm going to remove it from here. So let's say I had exported, um, let me open this up, if I had exported this wet particles one, and I had just brought that in, you know, and then now I've exported it back out, I would remove it from here. I would click on, right click on it and actually remove the category. Then I would go back up to brushes and I would import that category again, but this time I'm importing the exported 2016 file, the file I just exported. So now what I'm doing is I'm bringing back in a file that had been adjusted by being exported by 2016. So now the code all kind of matches. And I, I think you'll have much better success if you'll do that. It's a little tedious, but um, it's the best way to go. And most of the time now, you're, you know, what you really are going to be doing is you're going to be taking your old workspace and bringing that in, which will bring all of the brushes and stuff you've been using. Does that answer the question? What about on a Mac? Same thing on a Mac. It's just, uh, you know, you're, you go brush import, Brush export, workspace import, work, workspace export. Uh, Skip, I'm just saying because lots of just new feature questions. How do you make the speckle brushes? Like what's going on on new and paid, and why should we why should we upgrade? And I am saying you can you can uh, tackle this any way you want. But I was just writing a note saying that your class starts uh, Saturday. Saturday. Right. And he will be covering everything, guys, and you'll be getting brushes, and you'll be taught how to make brushes and how to understand the speckle and, and the new liquid ink, and everything will be covered. You know, Skip, everything right. will be covered. So you really do want to go sign up for that. But we can cover some of this stuff here, too. Well, um, whatever, that's what I'm saying. Whatever you can cover, like, please do, but I just wanted them to know that that class is about to begin. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've got, we brought in the 2015 or earlier workspace. We've brought in brushes. Uh, let's see, customize, customize new speckle brushes and making other brushes speckle ready. Okay. Uh, talking about, will you be talking about the Corel brushes for Photoshop? Um, I can probably talk a little bit about that. I just transferred my workspace from 2015 into 2016. Everything looks pretty good. Transferred all the brushes and papers and color sets, and I, I had in 2015. All looks good, uh, and I'm sure it will be good. Uh, Carrie, the the thing about you know uh, resetting and stuff. I would still do that before you do anything else to that workspace. But even if you don't do that, you'll probably be okay. This is really just a very, um, it's, it's a precaution that I think is, is uh, good for you to do. Let's see. Default color management, is that okay? Generally, yes. Well, uh, it kind of depends on you on the default color management. I'll, I'll show you what I do. Uh, I go to the color management setting, and, geez, I set this up before. <laughs> it's already gone. I set this to RGB 1998. I don't do any CMYK, uh, CMYK printing, so I don't care about it. I just leave it however it is. I want the, if I bring an image in, I want it to use the default profile, this one up here, with CM. Uh, CMYK, I don't care. I don't ask when opening. I don't ask when opening here. I want it to just go in and do what I'm telling it to do. We use, since I'm in Windows, I use Windows CMS, but you might be on uh, Adobe, and I think Adobe has a CE something or another. I'm not sure. Now, this part down here is kind of iffy. I use uh, relative color metric. 
And that one, um, it, it, what I read about it is it tries to uh, block out the colors that are out of gambit, that wouldn't print, and uh, gives you a kind of a clearer print of uh, your image, where one of the others, like perceptual, might give you um, more colors, but it's going to be a little bit fuzzier. I, I can't really answer this that well because, to be honest, I never print. So I don't worry about this that much. But I know that that's when I studied this at one time, that's the way I decided to go. But many, many people do lots of different things. And you can find some really good information about this on the Internet. Okay? So, and that's the way I like to keep it, and we'll keep that one that way. All right, so you want to see, let's go back to brushes for a second. We'll talk about dynamic speckles and those kind of things as well. But what I want to tell you first is that you're, you have a lot less brushes than you had in the beginning. Uh, there's only about uh, 350 it's under 400, I don't remember exactly how many, but under 400 brushes in the library, where 2015 probably had 760, and I think if you go back to uh, 12, you might have been getting close to 900. I, I really don't remember, but it, it was a lot of brushes. And so they've tried to streamline uh, your brushes, but what you may find, and let's, I'm in a, that's a custom category, but if we go up here to acrylics and gouache, that's two categories, and look at how few brushes are there. And if you run down the list, you may find that some of your brushes are not here. And so that may be panicky for you, but don't worry, it's not hard, uh, they're not gone. But before I get to where they are, I want you to notice that some brushes have a 2 after them. When they have a 2 after them, that means this brush, Captured Bristle, which was in Painter 2015, is still the Captured Bristle brush, but it's been updated. Uh, meaning that it's updated by either making it a particle brush, making it a dynamic speckle brush, or maybe it's using the new enhanced um, layer uh, blending, something like that. But something about it has updated this brush to make it a newer version of itself. Now, let's say there's something that you really were looking for in here, and I can't imagine, I mean, I, I don't remember what was in these categories. So, um, the way to find it, remember that when you come up here to the option uh, button for the, this is the library panel, and you click on it, you come down the list, there's something called the brush library. And when you highlight that, you're going to see your libraries out here. Now, I have a bunch of libraries. You're not going to have this many unless you've imported a bunch of libraries or made a bunch. You're going to have four. You're going to have Painter 12 X3, Painter 2015, Painter 2016, and Painter 11. Those are the libraries you're going to have. And if you click on Painter 2015, and it'll take it a minute to go over there, but if you click on Painter 2015, come on, come on, come on. Well, this is when I juggle arches. Okay. Now, if you click on Painter 2015 and you go in there, you will find that this brush library is identical to the library in Painter, uh, in Painter 2015. And you've got your captured bristle. It doesn't have a two after it. That's the original captured bristle brush. But they did something else, too, which was kind of interesting. They added to Painter 2015 some, um, well, I say that and I don't see them. I know they did when I see my stuff down here that I, oh, you know what, I bet um, I'm not going to see it because I'm in my library. Let's go up to Workspace. 
And what I'm going to do is go back to the default workspace so that we can uh, look at this library. Okay, so now if I go here, uh, I'm sorry, go here and here and brush library see there's the brush libraries that you would normally see and if we go to painter 2015 then here's you know your your brushes exactly like they were before but they did something different what they did is that they also added some 2016 brushes back here to this library of 2015 brushes. So in the event that you really want to stay with 2015 library, then you can essentially change to it and still be able to get to some of the 2016 brushes. Now, not all of them. You're not going to get those two brushes, you know, the ones that have been updated. Those are not going to be available to you, but if those are not important and you just really want to use the 2015, you've got a, a way to do it. You don't have to go through jumps and hoops to bring them all in. Now, if you wanted, if you had some brushes in here that you really wanted to put in the 2016 library, you could take any one of these brushes and export the brush and then come over back to all right, so this is the real wet acrylic brush. Well, let's say I exported it. Then I would come back to the 2016 brush library. And once I'm back, I could then import that brush into this category. And so that would bring that brush, which is not in here. The real wet brush was one that was not left, that would then bring it right into this library. So you could build your 2016 library by putting your favorite 2015 brushes into it. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? All right, is there another question along this line, Winifred? Maybe not along that line, but we have lots of questions. Okay. Okay, give me huh? Um. Let's see. What about the brushes? The older versions, will they work? Okay. Yes, they will work. You were addressing that, so that... Yes, the older brushes, um, brushes that were made in earlier versions are always compatible with later versions. In other words, any brush made in Painter 10 is going to be compatible in Painter 2016. The reverse is not true. Anything made in 2016 will not be compatible with 2015, X3, 12, 11, or 10. But those earlier versions are compatible with uh, 2016. Um, now, you may find that they may feel a little different, uh, or you may find that the brush engine or the brush names for the brush controls might be a little different. But, for instance, if we took, um, say, let's take the op opaque acrylic, and then if we bring in the brush engine, um, there it is, or not the brush engine, but the uh, controls. You'll see that it's still static bristle, it's still single, it's still cover, soft cover method. The, one of the new panels is called blending. This was the old um, wells panel. And we have a new thing here called enhanced layer blending. And we have dry out to transparency. These are all kind of new things. Plus we have a preset to change the presets of the resaturation bleed. Well, as long as those are not checked, they're not in play. 
if I check one of them or start changing these, then of course the brush is not going to be like it was originally and it will work differently. So all of the old brushes can be made into new brushes, but they don't have to be. You know, you just leave them as is and all of their code is still there. Uh, that was always there. Now, while we're talking about it, What's so exciting about this, you know, y'all hear the terms particle brush or dynamic particles or dynamic speckles, rather. And, you know, what does all that mean? Well, it's really a lot more involved than you would think. These, this is what is called the dab type. So all brushes start with a particular dab type. These up here at the top, with the exception of computed circular, these five were the ones, well, these four and eraser were the ones that started with painter and then all the rest have come in later versions so this stuff up here is old this is old and all of these are old all of this is old and rendered is old liquid ink is old and this watercolor camel hair and stuff that's all old this is the beginning of the new, and it's this is not exactly new. We had a category called Artist Oils before, and it's a category a lot of people loved. Um, and then we had two other, I said category, I meant dab type, and we had two other dab types that were called Blend Camel Hair and Blend Flat. They're now called Artist Soils Camel Hair and Artist Soils Flat, but they're the same uh, dab types. Okay, so these aren't really new. They've just been renamed. And then if we come down here, Thin Lines Gravity Particles, those are the same particle brushes that were in 2015, the ones that are called Gravity Particles, Flow Particles, and spring particles. They're now called thin lines because that's what they do. They sort of make thin lines that fly all over the place. Now we start getting the really new stuff. We have liquid ink gravity particles. So that means they've now brought particle technology and merged it with liquid ink technology, which gives us some really fun stuff to play with. And I'll show you some brushes like that shortly. We also have watercolor particles. So again, they've taken the watercolor technology and blended it with particle technology. Then we have dynamic speckles, which is a totally different way of working with particles. Think of them as uh, tamed particles, that the dynamic speckles are still particles, it's still particle technology, but they don't have to, they're not going to fly off all over the place. You can make more traditional kind of brushes with them. And then dynamic speckle bristle is still particle, but in this case, these speckles are going to act more and more like bristles. And it's really, really, really pretty cool. Uh, so all you have to do is change your dab type and all of a sudden your brush is going to really be very different than, than what it was before. Um, let's see, one other thing about this. Oh, just so you know, while you're in, into this, um, someone has asked for a demonstration, would like just more clarity about di the use of dynamic speckles. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Before I get to that, though, I just want to sh show you one other thing. I mentioned Artist Oils Category. This is the 2016 Brush Library. Artist Oils Category was taken out of Painter. Um, I'm going to say it was an X3, um, but it could have been 12. And what they did is they took the Artist Oils brushes and they mixed them in with acrylics, oils, and blenders. Well, a lot of people were asking to have those back. They liked having those as a separate category. So they did bring back the Artist Oils category. It is not a new category. It's the old Artist Oils category that they've just regrouped again. Okay? Bristles. Um, let's go to... It's, it's rich. Occam, I, I, O-K-U-M. I 
don't want to say that incorrectly, but it's Rich who is asking that question. Skip, I would love to spend some time learning how to customize the new speckle brushes and making other brushes speckle ready. Okay. All right, yeah. And then we won't go over in detail, Rich, because it, it'll take a while, but we can we can kind of look at generally uh, what we did. You were here this morning, though, right? So um, you saw me use them, but people here haven't seen it. But let, let's just let's see if we can do a little bit of both. I've just grabbed a dynamic speckle brush, which is called Spongy Particles. It does a couple of things. One is it's set up with color expression. Come on. Oh, my uh, my Wacom for some reason or another keeps going to the wrong place. This is set up with uh, color expression, which means that, oh, you know what? I need to get back to my other workspace. Hold on, everybody. Sorry about this. Da da da. <laughs> <laughs> Helen, are you having fun with? Uh, oh yes. Oh it? yes. I I never sleep anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. I really do. Okay, dynamic speckles. Where are you? Oh, I'm in 2015. I'm never where I need to be. Join the crowd, my friend. <laughs> Eddie is, is wanting to know, I told him the work. He wants to know, did that? Now I don't know what that was. Did that a did that apply to all custom brushes to, say, from version 8? I think it's that the ability to um, to import them into 16. You know, sometimes I don't hear all of your responses because I am actually focused on, on the questions and answers. Right. Skip, so I'm not sure exactly what you were saying. Eddie, you may speak up. Eddie Hicks. Oh, that's Edie. It's Edie. she. Oh, that's she. Edie. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Edie. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, well, did we, did you un, unmute her? I forgot I could do that. Yeah, you got to find her. There she is. Okay, Edie, you're unmuted. You want to ask your question? I have a couple of really neat blenders from back, way back when that somebody made that I would love to put back in. Yeah. But I haven't used since about 12. And I was just wondering if it's possible to, uh, like import a group a uh, library like that into 16 and have it work yeah yeah that should be fine i don't think you'll have any problem at all um bringing it in now what you may find though is that the new blending technology is so much better that you would rather take those take a new one. <laughs> well no just take those and tweak them to okay. use the new technology because okay. uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And I'm going to kind of show that with this uh, particle brush. So you'll be able to see that. Okay. Yeah, oh. These particles are wild. I love them. Yeah, aren't they? I love oh, them too. No. I'm looking for it, but there's a question. Someone said this uh, Painter 2016 technology was supposed to take care of that white edge but yes. she does not find that it does. And I think there's only greater, she just needs greater understanding about the new enhanced blending process. Right. right. Edie, I'm going to mute you again. Go for it. Okay. All right. So the enhanced blending, let's look at something here. If we go to the blending uh, control panel, this is, I want you to look at one thing very, very carefully. It says enhanced layer blending. So if I'm on the canvas layer, I'm not going to get that enhanced blending. So if I take this brush and I begin to work with it, you see I'm blending to white. And that's not what you are expecting. But if you go up to another layer, and there's something else you have to be aware of, you cannot use pick up underlying color. 
that has to be turned off because if you don't turn that off, then it's going to pick up the white of the canvas color or whatever is below it. So now when I take that brush, see the difference already in the color? And I begin to keep painting with it until it dries out. And see, it's drying out to transparency. And I keep going, and I'm not going to get any paint at all unless I come back over here and grab the paint, and then I can blend it again. Uh, Skip, can I interrupt? Sure. I, I think what she's asking is the thing I complained about all the time is you, when you went to an edge, it would bring white in uh. from the edge. And it does not do that anymore if you pay attention right. to this blending thing. It's yes. amazing. It, it does not do that unless okay. now if you do something like uh, select, uh, pick up underlying color. Look at that. See, I'm already getting the, the lighter stuff. Um, I've forgotten what else. Uh, I think I have to check this, but I think um, preserve transparency might mess it up too. It's not right now, but there was one other one I saw somewhere where it messed it up. But yeah, if you're if you have enhanced blending checked and you're on a layer and you don't have pick up underlying color selected, you're not going to get that stuff on the edge. Now, whoever asked the question, were you on the canvas layer? Who did ask that question? Let me find, let me try to find that question. Or just look near the end of the things and she, she or he will type in yes or yes. no. Well, will someone answer the question if they would like to be identified? And then we can make sure we have your question answered. Me. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's okay. see. Is uh, Gav, that was you that asked the question? Well, let's put him online. It is 1 o'clock where he lives, which, and, and we want to listen to him anyway, because Gav's probably got a great accent. Okay, talk to us, Gav. Hi, all right. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I've got an issue, because if I use the Bristol brush from the Artist Oils, and then I try and blend it using, for example, the Oily Blender 2. It always still drags the white in, even though the enhanced layer blending is selected. Okay, so you're using Artist Oils. What brush are you using? The Bristle Brush. Bristle Brush, okay. Yeah. All right, and so I... if we work with the Bristle Brush... <laughs> Okay, now notice that this is not working with enhanced blending. Okay, but I'm not getting the edge. All right, then you went to the blender brush. Yeah. Oily. Blue or some other color on the canvas. If he's thinking, you know, white edge, can you put a color on the canvas? No, that won't do anything for it. Let's I know. I know. If you select the oily blender too. Okay. And then drag from the white. Okay. It still drags the white over the color and starts to whiten it. Oh, you know? I know what's going on. What? Okay, so what this brush is, Gav, is it's a drip brush and uh, with method drip and subcategory grainy drip. So this brush works best on the canvas. But its nature is to, let's, let's just drop this down to the canvas. The way drip brushes work is they tend to uh, do exactly what you're thinking. They, they drag color around. And it, it's the, the way they work is actually uh, a lot of us who've used Painter a long time loved this way of working. Uh, thought it was really... Uh, great looking. And I don't object to it as long as it's, um, I make it, I do make it dynamic speckles, like this is dynamic speckles, but I tend to make the speckles further apart 
um, and I would probably draw to transparency. Let's see where my dynamic speckles. All right, see the dynamic speckles here are about a hundred. Well, if we bring that down to thirty-one, that's the count. Okay, and and uh, Rich, we're kind of back to your uh, interests right now. You see how I get more of a, a kind of well, that's not giving me what I want to do. I want to bring this up a little bit. There we go. You see how I'm getting kind of a, a different sort of footprint? Yeah. Well, that's how dynamic speckles work. I would never do this with velocity, though. I probably would do this with none. And let's bring this back up. There we go. That's more like I would probably use this brush because I want it to be real bristly. But see, that's that's the beauty of these these uh, dynamic particles. What what you want to think about is um, if we make this brush larger, and uh, actually we don't want to use this one because it. Well, I'll just do this. It's a blender, so it wouldn't be putting any color in, and I needed color. Uh, let's make this bigger. So if you dot this brush, there we go. You see those little dots? Those are the speckles that we've been talking about. Well, we our technology that we used to have that was called uh, static bristle. Uh, there it is, right there. That gave us the ability to do this sort of same sort of thing. We could get these dots, okay? And we could change the dots a little bit by clumping or uh, doing different things to its spacing and so forth. But now, with dynamic speckles, we have the ability to change the size of the dots. And we can change the size of the dot based on an expression. So if I say, uh, put pressure there and the size of the dot is high and then have a min size is low, then with heavy pressure the dots are going to be big and with little light pressure the dots are going to be small. And it gives you uh, much more uh, versatility with the bristle. Not only that, the part that people forget about of this dynamic speckle is that it allows you to use real bristle. So anything with dynamic speckle, you can actually engage the enable real bristle, and then that means you can change the, the way the bristles are made on the brush. You can make them uh, more stiff, you can make them fan out, you can make the brush, uh, say right now this one is round, but I can drop it down like that and it becomes a uh, thin brush or a flat brush. This technology also, it, because it relates back to the real bristle technology, if you happen to have an art pen, which is what I'm working with right now, See how it turns, twirls? That's barrel rotation. So with an art pen, I can paint sideways or I can paint with a big flat area. See, just like you would with a regular flat brush. You can cut into it or paint wide. You know, it's just, it makes everything so much more versatile. So that's another reason real bristle uh, speckle, dynamic speckled bristles are really terrific. Uh, I'm stopping up. Sorry, guys. Let's go to, let's go back to the dynamic speckle brush. That, but, I was do. that, might, relate to, that might relate to this. Uh, she's saying, is that, would that be a smudge type brush, the way it blends? it sort of pushes the color around. I don't know if she was looking that moment at the, um, um, you know, the painting you can do only on the canvas layer, the, the drip, drip. Method, 
I don't know if that's what she was looking at or if she was looking at you doing some um, blend, enhanced blending. And well, the it, question came from jo, uh, Joanne Anthony. Right. The problem is, I don't know how to answer the question. I don't work in Photoshop. And smudging is something that's really a Photoshop thing. I think I think we might do it in Painter some. Helen, do you would you consider the the smooth work that you do over a face, would that be smudging? No. I didn't no. think so. <laughs> no, no. In fact I never a painter does have smudge brushes, but I have never used them. Yeah. I don't, I'm painting over a face, I paint it with um with one of the things that applies color and then I blend it with that same brush with the reset out. Oh, uh, I got you. Okay, well that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But smudging that I know about is what people do in Photoshop and we we don't really do the same thing in uh Joanne, you're unmuted. If you would like to clarify your question, you're unmuted. Okay. I was just suggesting that that was similar to the smudge type brushes that used to be in the old Paint Shop Pro where you would use it for the backgrounds and it would like, um, you could smudge heavier, very, very light, but you did it by like mush, mushing the colors around, not blending. I got you. Um, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Um, yeah, a drip brush is kind of like that, but um, I would probably I would probably look in the plug-in type brushes and find something that moved the color around there uh, that would be different. Now, I, you know, <laughs> you're talking about stuff that's probably before the time I came into Painter, and I never have done much in PaintShop Pro. I did use uh, CorelDRAW when it first came out, but... Um, I didn't. I haven't done a lot in Paint Shop Pro either. I really, I kind of stay in Painter. I don't go in Photoshop. I, you know, except if I'm working on a photograph and I'm just doing photographic stuff to it. So, but I don't know. I mean, it it probably is similar to that. Okay, Elaine Weiss has an interesting question. She wants to know if Painter allows you essentially to use a trans parent layer like the layer content not containing the white to transfer to an object to be painted on an object like a t-shirt could you you know or or is it going to automatically flatten it to a white a layer that is on white that's on the canvas layer are you talking about a png file or she says or is can you only do this in photoshop you, well, she's going to have to Clarify. I will unmute her. Hold on. Elaine. There we go. Okay, Elaine, you're unmuted so that you can clarify. Elaine, are you there? Okay. Let's just continue. Okay. Um what I was saying before, um, let me mute Gav there. I think he was had muted himself. Um, I was starting to talk about spongy particles, and I'd kind of like to stay here for a minute. So don't, let's don't bring any more questions in right now. Okay. All right. Um, this uh, spongy particles, what I started to say is set up with color expression. And so what that does is that it takes your, um, let me bring up the color panel. It takes the main and additional color and it paints with those. So like if you take a yellow and then go to the additional color and make it bright orange or whatever, then as you paint lightly, you're going to get that orangey color. And as you increase your pressure, you'll get more yellow added to it. And it keeps getting yellower and yellower until it gets to bright yellow. Now, I have enhanced blending set on this, and I'm on the canvas layer. 
and so that's why I was getting white. So let's do this again on a regular layer. All right, so light, I'm going to get that orange. And then as I increase my pressure, I'm going to get more and more of the orange. See there? So you can actually take paint, and it's, it's kind of like blending it. Okay, I just wanted to bring out that about color expression because I think a lot of people are not that aware of uh, color expression and how it really can make a difference with the way you paint. Okay, now with this brush, you can see this, the particles and as it paints, you're getting a nice, smooth area, but it's not smooth, smooth. It still has a painterly quality to it because the brush, the dots are kind of like bristles. And if I change the paper, instead of using a, um, um, a watercolor paper, which is what I'm using, and we go to, say, this gessoed canvas. Now with light pressure, you can see that I'm picking up the um, texture. And as I increase my pressure, I'm going to fill up that texture just like you would if you were working with a real brush. See, that, that's really beautiful. Now, that none of that has anything to do with uh, dynamic uh, speckles, except that the dynamic speckles just tend to give you such a nice uh, sort of brushy kind of look or feel. Okay. If I go to dynamic speckle thing, notice that my count is real high, my size is high, and the min size is high. So I'm keeping these speckles pretty big. But if I drop this min size down, notice that now when I paint lightly, do you see how you see how how little paint is being added compared to what it was before? That's because the speckles are much much smaller and they're being applied with that light pressure. So I'm getting quite a difference between light to heavy. Where before, light, see my light is, is still fairly fill, full. See that? I can't quite make it as light as I was before because the speckles were bigger. So you have that kind of control that gives you more control with your brush. Now, if I bring my big size down, now I'm still getting those small speckles. And as I press hard, I can't quite fill it up. And also, as I press hard, I'm going to get a streakier kind of look because these speckles are not getting to be big enough to merge and to sort of fill up the space. Is that beginning to make sense to you all about how this is working? Uh, the scale size here, I'm going to tell you that I really think you ought to leave that at 100%. What that's about is as you make the brush larger. So if I come over here and grab that icon and I make the brush larger, then the scale of the bristles is going up 100% with the size of the brush. Um, this is edge. Right now we're working with a hard, I'm sorry, with a soft edge. If I click on that one, now the edge is harder. What we're talking about is the speckles. 
the edge of the speckles is harder than if I click over here and it's soft like that. Uh, you know, this is adding randomness to the size. We can jitter it. Uh, what I found interesting about opacity is I found that when I turn the opacity off, I seem to get more opaque rather than less. The jitter tends to make the whole thing look a little less. Now, what I want to say about this, too, is that if we take this same brush, we'll take it back to its original, and we add impasto to it, it can be really quite lovely. So if I go here and go color in depth, now I would not want to use 100% embossed, so that's just way too bit much. But if I bring that amount down to about 2 or 3, 4, 5%, let's go, I tell you what, we'll go to 5%. That'll be, I think, fairly a fairly heavy amount. And I'm going to set this up at pressure. That means I want to have a min minimum depth of about 10-15%. That means that it will go 10 or 15% uh, of 5 is the smallest uh, amount of depth that we'll get. Smoothing, I'll leave at 100, but I'm going to bring the plow down to about 2 or 3, 4%. Now watch. Can y'all see the impasto? I tell you what, let me darken this. Can you see it? Um, I'm, I'm not hearing from anybody, so I don't know. Uh, Helen? I can see it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What I like about it, notice how this is pretty realistic. Now, I'm kind of going into the paper right now because it's probably a little bit too small. I need to bring this up a bit. Yeah, there we go. We're going over the top. But notice how really close to impasto that looks. And there's actually a couple of impasto brushes that are really quite nice now. If you go into impasto and we look at uh, which one is it? Speckle Bristle Impasto. This one uh See if it's on its yep. Look at the impasto here. You know how the impasto sometimes just gets real um I don't know, real freaky looking. It's uh, uh gets too shiny or too whatever. Well I think this is looking a lot better than it's ever looked. Uh, the impasto that's called Course Impasto Jitter 2, that's using newer technology. And I love it as well. When you press hard, you get a fair amount of impasto. When you press lightly, it just it sort of smooths into that, kind of smooths out the impasto, which I think is kind of neat. And even Gloopy. Y'all know Gloopy, that brush? Uh, yep. Not many people would use it. And it's not changed a lot, but it is changed. Uh, what it does is it'll, if you put it out here, it's going to give you the color that you're working with, which is that purple, okay, that you see. Let's switch it to, let's make it, bright orange. <laughs> now it'll be bright orange, I hope. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it, it it's like laying down a tube of paint, although light pressure gives you just a little tiny line, light to heavy, you know, you can go thick to thin. Now, if you take this and 
do that, notice that it picks up the color that's underneath there. What are you typing about? I'm answering questions. Oh. Well, that's I'm good. Working. Okay. <laughs> I have a job to do. Why don't you, uh, while you're typing, once you mute yourself, then we will hear the clickety-clack. Oh, okay. No problem. This yeah. is what we hear when you type all the time. You know that, don't I know you? it. That's why I try not to do it. I do it all no, the time. No, you don't. You do it all the time. I know. I'm <laughs> awful. Okay. Uh, but I love this brush now. I've gotten where I've gotten sort of used to it, and I think it's really kind of fun. I do, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we can do, Helen. Uh, we can... These brushes are delicious. Ah, that's a good point. Uh, I showed buttery, I, I showed some uh, liquid ink brushes earlier, and I also showed some buttery particles. I think I'd like to show that again. Uh, let me take that off. I'm on a layer. I'm going to change my paper to something that has some texture in it and some lines. By the way, y'all, notice this. Watch this. I can rotate the paper. Isn't that cool? That is All very right. cool. Yeah, it gives some really neat stuff. All right, so this is that old paper called Wind of Frost, and I've got a brush called Thick Paper. This is a brush that I'm trying to make, uh, and it's based on my old uh, buttery oils brushes. These I'm calling buttery particles. And if we take a sort of a dark color and we start, that's not giving me a color. Why no? Oh, I know why. Because I need to be on the canvas layer. Okay, so this brush is also set up with color expression. So I'm picking up the purple of the secondary color and the heavier a paint I get a combination of those which would be a little bit more of a, a brown or chocolate coming into the to the purple but notice the you know it's picking up the paper beautifully it's giving you impasto based on the paper and the reason for that is if you look at the impasto uh, brush control here, notice that the depth method is paper. So it's not putting impasto in the way we've been doing it. It puts it in by, by virtue of what, uh, what the paper looks like. So it gets thick where the hills of the paper are and thin in the body or the valleys, sorry, of the paper. All right, so that's some pretty neat kind of texture that you can get. And start thinking in terms of all sorts of papers that you could do. I mean, you could do a, a photograph. I have a photograph of a magnolia that I've made into a paper. And you can set up your depth uh, method to uh, original luminance. And so the luminance of the object, if I were like using a clone of it, would determine the depth. So the light, lighter colors would be thicker paint, darker colors would be thinner. So you would have this magnolia that's thicker paint because it's white and the leaves and stuff around it would fall off to the side. Now what I've done here is I have a thick paper brush and now I have, I'm going to go to a paper brush. It is not impasto. It's just working with paper texture. So what it's going to do is just hit the hills. See, so it's now I'm, I'm going to be able to color the, the hills and leave the valleys in the darker kind of color. Isn't that pretty, though? Mm -hmm. I just love what we could do with this stuff. I mean, it, it gets, you know, down here where I don't have any background color, you know, I'm, I'm picking up 
the shape, but it's not it's not raised. You know, this is flat down here. <laughs> it's only going to be raised up here where it's over the top of the impasto. I just think that offers all kind of possibilities. Um, and a lot of this, it's not really the dynamic, text, uh, dynamic speckle technology that allows it, but it, I don't know what it is. It's something about this new technology that sort of lends itself to play and learning, finding these new ways of working, I think. Uh, what time is it? Ooh, it's after 9 o'clock, so it's going to be, probably have to leave pretty soon. Uh, what other kind of questions have we got that I probably need to get to? Let's see. Uh, well, I can't. Winifred, can you tell me uh, what kind of questions that you might not have answered? Because I'm seeing that some of these you've answered. Did you go away? You can't get I back in. I have to in? unmute me because oh. I have been I have been quiet. I have been quiet. Um, maybe a little attention to to uh, the ability to import Photoshop brushes, the AVR files. Okay. I don't think you've touched on that. There have been a couple of questions on it. I haven't, as a matter of fact, and I'm wondering if I have any anywhere. Uh, I probably don't, but I bet I can find one. Anybody know offhand where you can get some free ABR brushes? Uh-oh. Got all online, plenty of them. Close. Yeah, that's what I was fixing to do, and I, I went up here to go online, and my webinar thing just popped up like it was closing. What's her name? What's that? What's that lady's name, guys, that publishes all of those brushes? Somebody knows. That's of course, a, I have. I have some. You want me to send you one? No, I'll go ahead and get. I mean, there's some here. Photoshop free brushes. Um, Y'all, I'm looking at here. Uh, big watercolor splats. Is this one? Sorry, we couldn't find any. What? Why not? It's right there. It says, free download this file now. Okay, good. So we'll save the file, and I'll put it in my custom painter stuff under brushes, uh, ABR brushes somewhere. Well, I thought I had some ABR brushes. Well, we'll just go new folder, ABR. Y'all, it's gotten dark. I'm going <laughs> type, and I looked down and couldn't see my uh, keyboard. Open that up. Oh, shoot. Where did it go? There it is. And save. And we can move this back up now. And we're going to go here and go to custom painter stuff, brushes, next, ABR. And we're going to extract these. Okay, painter, don't give me a hurry. I mean, <laughs> Windows to die with me here. Extract all. Cannot complete the press of oh, extraction wizard. Folder's empty. <laughs> Can't be. No, it's fine now. You sound like you're getting sick. I know, it sounds that way, doesn't it? I think that's just, uh, something's in the air. I have the door open to the screen porch and I just think there's something in the air outside that's making me get stopped up. Uh, now let's see, have we got ABR brushes here? Oh, come on. What happened? Big watercolor spatter, ABR file. Yep, that's it. That. That's it. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was. All right, so now we go into Painter. And whatever library you're currently in is the library that they will be brought into. So right now I'm in Painter 2016, and I'll go up to Brushes, Import, New from Photoshop Brush Stamp ABR. So we click that, and we'll get our uh, import window open. And I will go to Custom Painter Stuffed, Brushes, Next, and ABR Brushes. And click on that file and say OK. And I name of category. Why am I having to? There's something about this name that it didn't like. It's probably too long. I've yeah. seen Painter not want brush um, things that long. That's like really excessive. Okay, so we'll just call it watercolor ABR. Or how about H2O ABR. And we say okay. And then it brings in uh, the 11 stamps. And so now we are in that category, which is HBR. And what they do is they bring them. You lose the name of the brushes, but they bring them in as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what these are are stamp brushes at this point. So if you just press onto the painter like that, and let's make the brush a lot bigger then you'll see the watercolor stamp, okay? See, that's the how the stamp was made. And if we take to the next one, uh, and we make it larger, see, that's that one. Now, the beauty of this is that we can... These brushes, even though they're stamp brushes, in Painter, we can make adjustments to them so that they, they actually paint. And look at how that looks right there. It's kind, of, it's kind of spotty, but what that means is I just need to go up here to Spacing, and I want to take this, the Spacing and bring it down to Nothing. And look, already. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Starts making something that's pretty neat. And then we come up to General. And this is a captured dab, and it's covered, and it's grainy soft. Well, let's say we take this to grainy alpha blend, and we go to grain, and we bring the grain up to about 30%. And I don't remember what paper I had open. I don't see my papers anymore. So let's... You had Horizontal Chaos the last time I saw. Okay. Oh, I just went to the wrong place. Radial Menu, Papers. Here it is. No. I have no idea where it is. There it is. Okay, so it was, oh, okay. it was the, uh, yeah, window frost. Mm -hmm. We'll go back to uh, my favorite, which is that gessoed canvas. Okay, we're not quite getting it. Let's see what we can do here. Let's go up. There we go. All right, so now I'm getting textured sort of stuff. This would, you know, when I put this texture in, it, it's probably becoming more chalky than anything else. But we can also, it, it, if I take this brush now and let's take that off and we're going to add another layer and we go to uh, blending. See, I can set up enhanced blending 
and I'm going to dry out and I'm going to actually let it dry out. I'm going to take it down to about 3000. Um, I'm going to bring the blending up a bit. I'll set it to pressure, but I'm going to invert it. So light pressure is going to blend for me. And regular pressure will add uh, paint, but light pressure won't add much because the minimum amount is zero. So let's see how that works. Light, heavy, and it goes to All right, see, I'm going really light. Look at the blending. Pretty neat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Skip, an a yeah. import ABR file question. Okay. You're being asked if you're going to cover importing ABR files from Photoshop. That's what he just did. Yeah. Well, he imported it, but it wasn't from Photoshop. Right. Well, you you still, you have to take it out of Photoshop. You have to export it from Photoshop and then import it into Painter. You don't go directly from the software to the software. So that would be the only way to do it, would be export it out. Or wherever you got the file from originally. I'm not, I mean, am I answering the question for the person? That, I, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the answer. Okay. But, I mean, they, um, remember, I don't do that much in Photoshop. So sometimes when I think something is a particular way, it may not be that way because I don't do enough in Photoshop. Look at that. I love the way this blends. That's, I, I, I'm crazy about enhanced blending. And even with something that's sort of, uh, you know, feathery like this. It's really beautiful. Now, we could take the same watercolor brush and let's just take it to wet. And I tell you what, let's make it, um, we'll make it real wet buildup. Now, in this case, I don't want to use the enhanced stuff and I don't want to use the blending because watercolor doesn't work well with uh, bleed and stuff. It needs its uh, its amount to be up there. Now let's pick a watercolor paper. We'll pick that one. And we're using real watercolor technique. So let's just see what it looks like first. Pretty nice. Wow. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, so now we'll come in. Glad you're pleased, Helen. Pardon me? I said glad you're pleased. I heard that. Wow. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to make this one wetter. I want a little more of a line there, so I'm going to bring the viscosity up, and I'm going to bring the evaporation down. I'm working with uh, current paper with a flow resistance, which is good. Now, I want it to be a little bit darker when it settles, so I want the settling rate to be up, and the weight can come down. I don't need a lot of pickup uh, right now. We might do that later. I don't want to add any roughness, and I do want this to be fairly wet, so I'm going to drop that down but I wouldn't mind having some granulation and I'm going to give it a little bit of a run and accurate diffusion to delay diffusion is fine and we'll go to blue. Now this should give me a kind of a dark line around the edge. Yep. See that little bit of darkness that you get, which is kind of like what watercolor does.
Oh, that's pretty. What fun. Yeah, isn't it fun? I love this. Um, and then if I want to do something like this but make it even more fun, I could take this wet and drop it into grainy wet buildup. Now I'm in the watercolor technology, and <clears throat> I'm going to bring the wetness up a little bit. Pick up down is fine. Dry rate three percent is fine. I'm going to bring evaporation down. Actually, no, I'm going to bring it up. Diffuse is fine. I want some capillary action around the edges. Accurate diffusion is. Take that off. Okay. Now, this is going to Whoa. spread out. <laughs> Look at that. I'm not going to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't fun, though. I mean, I, this stuff is so much fun to play with, it, Helen. And, and, you know, we're never really sure what's going to no. happen. Right. And that's part of the fun. All right. Uh, oh. This one, I don't like the, I want this to be without so much black. But uh, when you're using real wet buildup, you're going to get more of the, uh, kind of the little black lines that go in there. But that just shows you bringing in a brush and then leaving the capture dab and playing with it. But if we decided to go away from the capture dab, we could. I mean, if we went down here and grabbed dynamic speckled bristle, I could still leave it at wet grainy buildup. And now I'm changed to yuck. Uh -huh. Well, let's <laughs> just, we'll fix it. Uh, we've got to take the particles and drop those down mm -hmm. a good bit. I'll leave the size about like that. That should, yeah, there we go. Ta-da! <laughs> now, the, uh, if we change this to, instead of dynamic speckle bristle, and we go dynamic speckle gravity, leave it at wet, now we're still with dynamic speckles, but we're going to use gravity particles as well. I'm going to make that high, this high, and I'll bring this down lower. And particles can be, can come into play with the chaos and stuff. And I think I am going to make this one kind of chaotic just for funsies. Now look what the brush looks like. Whoa. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Oh, gosh. You know what? I'm, we've got to look at the um, liquid ink for a second. What, how much? Oh, gosh. All right. I'll, I'll keep you all for uh, 10 more minutes. If you got to go, go. Uh, I'm sorry I'm over time. But if you can wait 10 minutes. These are some liquid ink brushes that I've been working with. And I, I just, I, I love these brushes. Um, this brush I call Strings, and it again is a, um, uh, it works with color uh, expression. So a light pressure will give me a black line or the color that's in the secondary or additional color. And just a light kind of, Squiggle gives you a real nice uh, sketchy line that kind of gets a little bit uh, loose, so to speak, or, you know, a little bit textured. Doing the same line but pressing a little harder gives you a bigger, fatter line that's a lot more textured. So I think of this as like making branches. And then I could come off of it with something like this. And have a little bump here and have another one coming off. 
something like that, which I think is kind of neat. And if I do it really hard, the brush gets even bigger and it goes to the other color. So I could go heavy and then start going light and it's like I'm taming the edges, you know, but still getting this kind of uh, wiggly sort of look. So all of that's fun, right? Well, suppose we come in and we do something like this. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a little vase. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> and I bring my stems out. Okay, so when I come up to the edge of one of these and I just stop and press, oh. then I get these little flowers. Oh, oh that's amazing. <laughs> what I think is so fun about it is this one brush, you know. Now I'm going to do this and sort of start giving some color to the brush. You know what I didn't do this whole time either time and it's fine I'm not going to do it. We haven't done any of the audio stuff That's which right. is really kind of fun. Isn't that cute though? <laughs> that is. I love it. Okay I'm not going to do any more of this. Uh, the, um, the good thing about these uh, brushes though is that they have a a, a a wet feel. See, like as I bring this in, you see how it, you get that wet feeling there? Um, where the the inks cross, it's they kind of bleed into each other. And, and what's really fun with this kind of stuff, if we drop this layer to the canvas layer, and then we go up to layer, lift canvas to watercolor layer. Now this is no longer liquid ink, but it's watercolor. And so I can go into, say, a watercolor brushes and grab something like the wetting agent. And we've got this watercolor paper here. So this wetting agent will uh, wet this watercolor. Oh my gosh. Look at that. So I can come in here and take this and give it a whole nother watercolor feel. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, I just, I mean, it, it's, for me, it's just fun seeing all this technology that can happen, regardless of the fact that you can do these really wonderful, beautiful uh, images. You know, of course, I, I tend to just want to play, um, and I, I very seldom show stuff, but I've got, I, I have a couple of brushes here that I've really been working on that I love a lot. They're in my demo brushes, but it's oh. these things. And then they turn into watercolor, and you've got these beautiful beginning landscapes. Just oh. this letting it, you know, do its thing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I play with this like this, and, and then... Um, just see what happens, you know, how can I get um, a landscape look out of this? And it's it's amazing how you can start picking out hills and valleys and, you know, all kind of things like that. And also, you can do something like uh, this. This, needs, this brush needs to be drier, but I'm going to take it to red. And I'll take the back part to kind of a yellow-green. 
Uh, oh my gosh. Helen, do you paint watercolor? No, but I want to. Mm -hmm. I no, this... paint everything but, and I have failed miserably at watercolor. <laughs> we all do in the beginning. You just play with it, Helen. It's fun. Uh, well, you you have convinced me a long time ago. Now I use liquid ink, and I was never going to touch it. But because <laughs> of you, I play with that. Now I have to try the watercolor. Oh, my gosh. But this one is not... Um, it's running a little bit too much, but I mean, you look at this beginning to get these just sort of interesting flower forms from this. Um, and the, uh, I forgot what I was fixing to do with it. <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, I was going to do the orchid leaf. I was doing this in the very beginning, I think. I just got this brush working for me. And it makes these really beautiful leaves. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm a convert, Helen. <laughs> yeah. You stayed on me till I got there. And now <laughs> I like Now I like I want oh nothing to do with it. Isn't that pretty? I can paint in real watercolor, and everybody says that's hard. But I think this is harder, at least so far. You know, I've just begun. Yeah. I, I think uh, real is harder. I, I have trouble doing it. Um, but see, this I can always... Undo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I undo all the time. When I'm doing my sumi kind of stuff, I'm going to undo all the time. And uh, I, I love doing that stuff, though. I really do. I've got some new ones that I've been working on that I'm real happy with. Uh, well, that's a new one right there, that kind oh. of look. Uh, but the ones I like are these unsos, this kind of thing, which I, I just think these are so fun. Isn't that fabulous? It's fabulous. Yeah. Making these kind of deals. I don't, I'm not sure they're fabulous, but they're, they oh, are I, fun. You know, they, they are. really are fun. So why don't you print? I, because they would stack up all around the house. Yeah, 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 you're right. I have stacks. <laughs> you know, and and I I don't have any, I, I don't sell anything. I don't have any way to sell. I don't try to sell. So there's no reason to print. And, and also, I have this, I have this aversion to putting it on paper. For me... <sighs> It is so pretty on the computer screen. And what I want people to do is get a big monitor and put it on the wall and put these things in the in the monitor. And, you know, flash through multiples or whatever. And they're, you're beginning to see galleries now where they've got the monitors on the walls and they're actually displaying the work that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I saw something. There is a... In L.A., there's a big digital art group or something, and they're having a uh, their major contest uh, coming up in, I think, uh, August 24th is the deadline to turn in, uh, you know, JPEGs uh, to be juried. And it's a big digital show, just digital. Uh, wow. I'll have to enter? look that up. I'm sorry, say that again? You need to enter it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you do. Well, we all do. But, I mean, you know, it's I have to look it up and see. Now that I'm beginning to see that there are contests, I'm not opposed to entering contests. I think that's kind of a lot of fun. And they actually say they would they give you X number of prints, I think 10 prints at some huge size, so that they can then have a show displaying your work. And, uh, you know, that's disappointing. I would much rather them just go in and say, you know, let's put these big monitors on the wall and yeah. uh, show the work. Anyway, guys, uh, it, I really appreciate you coming and uh, joining me for my little celebration. And <laughs> I hope you got uh, something out of it or 
you know, you got some things out of it. I do have that class, though. If any of you want to have the uh, take the class, uh, there is time to take it. All of this stuff that you've seen, I will go into a lot more detail with it, and uh, you know, really specifically answer uh, the questions. We'll have a lot more time to do that. Um, so if you feel like joining the class, it starts Saturday. You can register for the first week uh, after the class starts. You can continue registering for another week. So uh, if you can join in, the class has videos that are downloadable so that you get to keep them. And uh, the uh, it, we'll probably have live sessions, and I'll also record the live sessions. Now, I recorded this session, and this one, and the one from this morning, uh, I will post them on the blog tomorrow, and so you can come and download them at that time. And keep them for yourself and look at them. All righty, that's about it. Uh, thank Winifred, you. thank you. And, and Helen, thank you so much for letting me just impose on you and come and talk to me because it it's so much easier when you know when when you got somebody you can kind of feed off of <laughs> well i didn't i didn't say much because i was so enchanted with what you were doing oh. but thank you from from everybody i am sure thank you very much well thank you and i will see you guys at the next whenever hi uh, everybody this Bye -bye. is actually kind of fun i may do this again good All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye.